Of course, in this subject, we are interested to look at how we can perform the mechanical analysis on the truss structure. One of the analysis method is what we call the method of joints. Okay, the nama pun method of joints. So the analysis will begin at the point of the joints of the truss, like um, this. Okay. Tapi kalau ada multiple joints, where should we start from? Okay, strategically, one very important tips that you should always remember is that when you perform the method of joints, always start at a point where there is at least one known force and a maximum of only two unknown force. Kenapa? Bila ada two unknown force, then you only have to form two simultaneous equations. So, it will be much simpler and much easier to tolerate lah. Okay? Okay, so if you look into this example, you are required to find the forces in each member of the thrust structure and you have to decide whether it is in a tension or compression force. Okay, looking at the thrust structure, you can see it consists of uh, three members, which is member AB, member AC and also member BC. So these three members are being interconnected to one another through three joints as well, which is joint A, joint B and joint C. In the first part of the analysis, before you proceed with the method of joints, let us first draw the support reaction forces happening at each joint. Okay, so at joint A, you know that is a pin kind of joint. So the support reaction of uh, the pin joint will be in this direction and we are going to call it AY and also another force in this direction and we are going to call it AX. Okay. Um, on the other hand, the joint at point C is a, a rocker type of joint. So if you recall from the previous lecture in the table given to you, so the direction of the force at joint C would be in this direction and we are going to call it CY. This truss structure consists of three joints, which is joint A, joint B and joint C. So, the big question now is where do we start from? A ko, B ko or C? So, remember the tips that I gave to you earlier. You should always start at a joint where there is at least one known force and two unknown force. Okay, so in this truss structure, so let us look specifically at a known force over here which happened at joint B. So, 500 newton is known. We also know that there is a reaction force between joint B and also member BC. So let's just assume the direction of the force acting on member BC is in this direction. Okay. So we also know that there should be another reaction force between joint B and also member AB. So we still don't know what is the direction of the reaction force. So let's just assume the direction of the force to be in this direction. So, the criteria of joint B fits the initial requirement for the methods of joints, whereby there is one known force of the 500 Newton and also there are two unknown force of FBC and also FBA. So, in this case, we are going to start from joint B. Now, we have to draw the free body diagram of joint B. So, if this is joint B, by which we assume it to be a pin B, and then we have to free up the other element uh, connected to it, which is member of beam BC, and also another member of the truss structure, which is member BA or AB, up to you how you want to rename the member. Okay, so the 500 Newton is known and it is in this direction. And then the reaction force... Uh, between pin B and beam BC, we assume it to be in this direction. Okay, look very carefully. The direction of the reaction force is being subjected to the joint B. Okay, joint B. Now, you also have to create a similar force subjected to the beam or member BC pula. Okay, so the magnitude would be the same but it have different direction or opposite direction. So if you look carefully, the combination of force happening between joint B and also beam or member BC would look like this. It's like a couple force lah. Same magnitude with different direction. 
Okay, why does this happen? Basically, because of the equilibrium condition between joint B and also member BC. Okay, in a joint and the member is different element or different entity. So, if we assume it to be in an equilibrium condition, so the corresponding force acting at joint must be the same with the corresponding force acting on the member, okay? With different direction, of course, because of equilibrium condition. Okay, so accordingly, if we assume that the force from member BA being subjected to the joint B in this direction, so the corresponding or reaction force acting on the member would be in the opposite direction lah, with the same magnitude. The same principle applies. Okay, this is how it will look like. Looking back at our truss structure, so this angle is 45 degree and the length of beam AC is 2 meter and the length of the beam AB is also 2 meter. So you can say that this is a segitiga kaki sama. So by right, the angle over here would accordingly be 45 degree as well. So let's just put that particular information in our free body diagram. Okay, now we are ready to apply the equilibrium condition in this particular free body diagram. So in the x direction, summation of all the forces in x should be equivalent to 0. So there is one force over here in the x direction which is a 500 Newton pointed to the right and the magnitude of this force is positive. Okay, now looking at the force over here, which is FBC, which is in a sangat bangat punya condition, accordingly, you can resolve this force into the x direction by which the magnitude will be FBC sine 45 because it is opposite. And you can also resolve the force of FBC into the y direction and the magnitude will be FBC cos 45. So as we are calculating the equilibrium condition in x direction, so we are going to take this magnitude which is FPC sine 45 and put it in our equation. Uh, the magnitude will be a negative value because the arrow or the direction is pointed to the left. Okay, so if there is no more uh, forces acting on the x direction, then the summation of all these forces will be equivalent to zero. So as you can see, there is only one unknown value over here, which is FPC. So we can easily solve for this particular equation, whereby FPC will be equivalent to 707.1068 Newton. So as the FPC is uh, calculated to be a positive value, it means that the direction of force that we initially assume for joint B and also member BC is in the right direction. Lah. So in this way, if the force acting on member BC is to be in this direction, so at the other end of the member BC, it will be in the same magnitude but with the opposite direction okay because it is an equilibrium condition so if i were to redraw the member of bc like this so the forces acting on each end of the member bc would look like this it is like it is compressing between one another kind so the member bc is in a compression state so now let us continue to apply the equilibrium condition in y direction. So assuming the upward direction as positive, summation of all forces acting in the y direction should also be zero. So there is one force over here which is FBA and it will be in a negative value because the arrow is pointed downwards. And then remember the FPC has been resolved into the y direction as well. So we are going to add up to FBC cos 45. Uh, it is positive because we assume the direction to be in upward direction, okay? So, as there is uh, no other forces acting in the y direction, so the summation of all these forces should be equivalent to zero. So, recall that we already calculated FBC from our previous step. So, we just substitute that particular value into our equation here. So, we're going to put 707.1068 over here and just carry over the remaining expression. So, accordingly and easily, we can calculate the variables, the unknown variable over there, which is FBA. And the magnitude of FBA is equivalent to positive 500 Newton. Remember that I already mentioned earlier that if the magnitude of your force is positive, it means that your initial assumption is correct. Okay, so if the forces acting on beam BA is in this upward direction, so the reactive 
active force acting on the other end would be in the opposite direction, which is like this. So if I were to redraw the member BA to be like this, then the forces acting on each end of the member would look like this. And as you can see, it is in a tension state. So we can say that member BA is in a tension state. Okay, let me just clear up all the sketches in the original picture. Okay, now, if I were to re redraw the corresponding forces acting on each beam, then at one end of beam BC would look like this. So accordingly, at the opposite end, and will also have the same magnitude and the direction will also be in the opposite direction like this okay so we already calculated that the force acting on member bc is 707.1068 so therefore the force acting on the other end of the beam bc will also be equivalent to 707.1068 newton so let's apply the same concept to a member BA or AB. So the initial assumption will be in this direction and the magnitude of the force is calculated to be 500 Newton. So if the 500 Newton is acting on one end, so the force acting on the other end will also be 500 Newton like this. Okay, so we can continue our analysis by considering other joints pula. So let us take um, joint C for example. So the second step of the analysis would be to consider or to continue the analysis at joint C. Okay, similar with the previous step, we just need to redraw the free body diagram at joint C. So if this is P in C, and then we know that there is one reaction force in Y direction. So uh, the force acting from beam BC to joint C would be in this direction. And we already calculated the magnitude to be 707.1068 Newton. Okay, so now there is one remaining force. Um, acting at beam AC uh, and let's just assume the direction of the force to be in this direction and we are going to call the force to be FAC. Okay, so now accordingly, I can calculate the magnitude of FAC and also the magnitude of CY by applying the equilibrium condition in both X and Y direction. Okay, so I'm going to go very quick for this particular part because I believe you are all very familiar with the process of forming the equilibrium equation. So assuming all the summation of force in X is equivalent to zero, I'm going to substitute all the expression in the X direction, whereby there is one FAC over here, magnitude is negative negative because the direction is pointed to the left and then uh, look at this 707 newton punya, uh, uh, punya force so as you notice it is a sengit banget kind of uh, force so you can resolve it into two direction which is in the x and y direction so if it is resolved in the x direction then it will become uh, 707.1068 cos 45 degree so apply that in our equation and we will get the corresponding force of AC to be 500 Newton. So accordingly, if you draw the free body diagram of the forces acting on the beam, then the force would look like this. And it seems like the member of AC or CA is in a tension state. Okay, by right, you can easily calculate the magnitude of CY by applying the equilibrium condition in Y direction plot. So this is quite straightforward and I'm going to go very quick for this particular part and you will get the magnitude of the forces acting on the Y direction at joint C to be 500 Newton. And if the magnitude is positive, then it means that the, the initial assumption is correct, which is upward. So is it in tension or compression state? Oh, you don't have to mention lah because because this is an external force acting on the joint. It's not the internal force acting on the member. So only the forces acting on the member that you state, either it is in tension or compression. If it is a support reaction force, which is an external kind of force, so you just indicate the direction of the force. Now you can find the remaining unknown forces at joint A. I'll draw the free body diagram, particularly at joint A and then apply the equilibrium condition and conveniently you will get uh, the magnitude of um, AX to be 500 Newton pointed to the left and the magnitude of AY to be 500 Newton pointed downward.
Okay, now the final step, we can redraw all the internal and the external forces acting at the joints and acting on the member in a more appropriate sketch. Okay, so um, the first step, let us just draw the joints first. So this is joint A. Uh, we represent that with a dot uh, to represent the pin. And then there's a truss member over here which is connected to another joint which is joint C. Okay, there's another vertical truss member over here which is which connect between joint A and also joint B. And finally, there's another truss member over here connecting between joint B and also joint C. So, let's just uh, load it, load it all this uh, B member, okay? Okay, now we have drawn all the joints and the truss members of this particular structure. Now let us draw the external forces acting on each joint. Okay, so there is one 500 Newton acting upward at joint C. And then there's another vertical force acting um, downward at joint A uh, with a magnitude of 500 Newton. Okay, there's another horizontal force acting at point A uh, with a magnitude of 500 Newton and the direction is to the left. And finally, one known force acting at joint B with a magnitude of 500 Newton acting to the right. Okay, if there is no other external forces acting at each joint, then we can start um, sketching the internal forces acting between the joints and also the members of the truss structure. So we have an internal forces acting at this direction, connecting between beam AC, and there is also an equivalent couple force acting over here with a magnitude of 500 Newton. Along the AB truss structure, we have a pair of couple forces acting in this direction, uh, again with a magnitude of 500 Newton, and also another couple force at the other end of the beam uh, with a magnitude of 500 Newton as well. And finally, along the BC member, we have a set of couple force acting in this direction with a magnitude of 707.1068 Newton. And similarly, we have another pair of couple forces at the other end of the member uh, with the same magnitude of 707.1068 Newton. Okay, we are almost done. The final step is don't forget to include the state of each members of this truss structure okay looking at member ac you look at the direction of the forces acting at each end of member ac so you can say that this particular member is in a tension state Okay, now let us look at the direction of the forces acting at each end of member AB. So, at this direction, we know again that the state of member AB is in tension. Okay, and finally, uh, looking at the member BC, uh, the direction of the forces acting at each end of this member BC indicate that the member is in a compression state. Okay, so uh, all the information are complete. The jalan kerja dah siap. Okay, as this particular video almost reached its limit of 20 minutes, so I'm going to show the jalan kerja for this particular example in another short video, okay? So, stay tuned!